Welcome back to our series on Bach's Orgelbüchlein. I remember when I was in my twenties, my grandmother was dying of cancer. And one day she said to me, quite suddenly, I'm afraid. How do you answer that, especially as a young person? And I don't remember exactly what I did say, but it wasn't very satisfactory. I said something along the lines of, it comes to us all in the end, or, or something equally unfinished. And I spent many years afterwards thinking, oh, if only I'd said this or that to finish it off, to make it more complete. And today we're looking at the penultimate prelude in the collection, Alle Menschen müssen sterben. Everybody's got to die. Bach himself was no stranger to death. His parents died when he was a young person, and by the time he's thought to have written this prelude, he and his wife had lost at least two of their children. But the hymn itself, it doesn't look at death so much in terms of an inevitability that everybody has to go there, so much as as a gateway to celestial rejoicing. The text says, Effectively, everybody has to die, but it's okay, because God will look after you. It's what I should have said to my grandmother. Everybody's got to die, but it's okay. Somebody was asking me the other day, do people still sing this hymn? And I have to say, no, I've never heard it sung, at least. And I looked in the hymn book, and although the title is still there, it's only because the melody is still in the hymn book, but not the original text. And that's a bit of a shame because it might provide people with the kind of answer for when their grandmother makes a comment like that. So the hymn has a confident melody in a major key, and Bach's prelude here emphasises the calm faith. And maybe it's that disparity between the short title and the content that means that people perform this work in such a wide variety of ways. Sometimes you'll hear it played very funereally, with a soft eight foot stop and a tremulant at a slow tempo. And sometimes you'll hear it played with mixtures and trumpets at a breakneck speed. And it's always difficult to decide which is the best or whether to go somewhere in between the two. The way the piece is put together is fairly typical Orgelbüchlein. The melody is across the top, more or less unornamented. And there is a figuration which is shared between the hands and the feet in such a way that there is always one part in motion, in a semiquaver motion. It's possible to play it on two manuals, though there's no indication at all in the score that you should do, and Bach does generally write if he wants it on two manuals. And it's equally possible to play it on one manual, which is what I propose to do today. I talk a lot about harmonic rhythm, and here the harmonic rhythm is generally one harmony per beat of the chorale, which suggests a reasonably upbeat tempo. I've been asked what I mean exactly when I say it's a good idea to make a synopsis of the harmonies. And so I've written an example out here. It's the last six bars in which the top two staves show the original notes, uh, the pedal parts shown here together with the left hand, which incidentally is how it is in Bach's score as well, and the lower two staves show the synopsis. And so from these lower two staves, you can see the harmonies moving at the same rate as the chorale melody. And that's the kind of sketch that it's often valuable to make. I described the hymn as being one of calm faith, and that, I think, is how I want to put it across today. How you interpret the, the piece is entirely up to you, but I want neither flag-waving nor funereal style. I would like it to move, to flow purposefully along. So I will take a tempo somewhere in the mid-50s of crotchets. So it's a piece I'm really fond of. Don't be put off by the title. They say that everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die to get there. This hymn tries to explain the Christian perspective on that. But in any event, it's a wonderful piece of music. Mm -hmm. 